Hey, Blender Bob here. Let's talk about HDRIs and turntables. No, not that. This is a comparison between a JPEG 8-bit image and the original HDRI. On the left is the JPEG and on the right is the HDRI. Now you can see that it looks like there's no details in the sky at all, but if I reduce the exposure, oh suddenly in the HDRI you can see there's a lot of information and you can see the sun, but the JPEG has absolutely no details, it's completely washed out. If we take a color reading in the white here where the sun is, we can see that on the JPEG everything is at 1, 1, 1, but if we look at the HDRI where the sun is, it goes to crazy numbers like 44,000, 39,000 and 24,000. It is more white than white. Actually, it is so white that we can use it as a light source, and that's the goal of using an HDRI image. I use an add-on called the uh, Easy HDRI because, well, it's easy to manage the HDRIs with this, and I can easily switch them, and it sets up everything for me so I can do any modifications I want after. So you just need to select the folder where all your HDRIs are, and then it's gonna set up everything for you. You just click on the thumbnail to decide which one you want to use. <laughs> You can create a ground plane to cast shadows and you can change the orientation of the HDRI by changing the Z rotation. And if you want your ground to be transparent, then you just change the ground for a shadow catcher. The problem you will run into if you use a shadow catcher is that the shadow is always going to be grey instead of taking the color of the ground. So I had to do a little bit of gymnastic in order to fix it. What I did is to take the alpha of the model and multiply the color on it. Then I multiplied this on the plate and then I added the monster on top. And finally I did the same thing with the occlusion, multiplied the color and multiplied it on top at the end. And that's how I went from this to this. HDRIs give you a realistic image because like in real life, light bounces from everywhere. You can see at the bottom of the sphere the green from the grass reflecting on it. And if you have a shiny material, the environment will reflect in it. Here's a little trick to orient your HDRI properly. I created a cylinder that I placed at the right height, just like that at the right place. Go into rendering mode, then put the background image in the front, and then you just need to rotate the HDRI until the shadows match. In this case, the sun wasn't at the right height, so I will have to change it into the x-axis also. Yeah, it's a cheat, but if you don't tell anyone, nobody will know. You can find tons of HDRI images on the internet. HDRIheaven.com is one of the good places to go. They're all free, but in the film industry, we get the real HDRIs from the set. This is a test we did. In the movie we're working on, there's somebody beating someone else with a metal shovel. And because it's very dangerous, the guy is just holding a stick and we're going to replace the stick with the shovel. So we made an HDRI image from a Ricoh camera just over the table and we use it to light the scene. And it works perfectly, we get the right reflections everywhere, we just need to do a little bit of comp to integrate it, very simple comp. What I did was to add a blur because everything that comes out of CG is always too sharp compared to the plate, a little color correction, and a node to pre-multiply it to make sure that the corrections I do only apply to the shovel, not the entire plate. This is the HDRI that was done on set for this shot. So if you only get this, you don't know where the lights are coming from, it's hard to tell. There's one light source here, there's another big one there that's kind of yellow, more light source here, and there's this huge panel here that gives us a lot of light. Aha, you didn't know about that, huh? If we add the shovel into the scene, then you can see all the reflections match perfectly, the snow at the bottom, the big panel in the back, the yellow light, everything reflects exactly the way it's supposed to do, and I didn't have to do any lighting at all. Obviously, when we'll do the final shot, we'll need to make mock-ups of the actors to cast shadows on the shovel to make it more integrated. Isn't that cool automatic scene lighting? I feel like I need music here or something. Little trick here, I have a bunch of HDRIs for chrome reflections and uh, what I do is they're all numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and I import them as an image sequence. So this way I can play them one by one until I find the one I want, in this case number 29. Now let's move on to turntables. No, not this either. This is the turntable setup I use. First I turn around the object with two different environments and then I get the environment to turn around the objects to see how the light reacts on them. The first HDRI is just a generic daytime one, but the second one is the one taken from the set. 
so I can really see what it's going to look like once it's in the shot. Every company will have their own setup. Sometimes they want to sit in wireframe, then they want to sit in grayscale with ambient occlusion, with just the basic textures, with the lighting. So it's never the same, but usually it's automated. So you don't have to do anything. You just have a setup and you click a button and it's going to generate it for you. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm getting dizzy. Now you're probably wondering why is there a gray sphere and a chrome sphere at the lower corner? This is the plate that was shot on set, and you're supposed to add an alien in front. How are you supposed to orient your HDRI when you don't have any references? Usually, the CG supervisor will shoot not only the HDRI, but also a gray sphere and a chrome sphere as a reference. From the camera point of view, obviously, actually from the real camera. Back in Blender, we're going to import the reference image as a background image for the camera, and we're going to create two spheres that have the same size and, you know, approximately the same position as the reference image. Now, all we need to do is to rotate the HDRI image to match the one in the reference plate. And we have a pretty good match. Now, it looks like the HDRI is a little bit too strong. I'm just going to reduce it a little bit and until we get a perfect result. And this is how you match an HDRI image with the plate. This is my setup, it's really simple. I have a master node here, and under it you just parent your objects that you want to animate. You place them where you need them to be. You know, just make sure it's aligned the way you want it. And then everything is automated. It's gonna animate, it's gonna turn, it's gonna stop turning, and then the environment will turn. You can see here everything is already keyframed. This is the first HDRI, this is the second HDRI, and it just switches from one to the other like this. I will make this file available for you for free. Link is in the description. All right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Next time we're gonna talk about something else. Bye. Hey, Blender Bob, what's going on? You used to make a lot of jokes. Where are the jokes? Sorry, dude, but I'm hungry and I need to go cook myself a big old bacon, eggs, and cheese.